We got some big last-minute news coming out of uh, Israel tonight. It looks as though after uh, securing a pretty, what looked to be a pretty substantial win in the previous uh, Israeli election, which occurred, you know, just a month or two ago, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has failed uh, to form a government in in Israel after the election, and uh, it looks like we're headed for new elections. This is something I wasn't expecting. Uh, because in the last election, uh, if you look, there were pretty much there are two left-wing parties in uh, in Israel. You've got the Labor Party and the Communist Party, and between the two of them, I think they only had like 20 seats out of the 120 seat uh, Knesset. And so, even though I realized that uh, there was another opposition party, though it was still a center-right party, I figured that Netanyahu should not have a problem of finding a majority of out of the the remaining 100 seats in the Knesset of right-wing parties who would uh, be willing to participate in his government. However, that is clearly not the case because uh, late uh, Wednesday evening in Israel, uh, it uh, the Knesset voted to dissolve itself and hold new elections uh, supposedly on September the 17th. Now, it looks like uh, Netanyahu's undoing was his inability uh, to woo the religious right. Now, Netanyahu, like uh, most national leaders uh, within his country, is considered uh, to be a moderate. He's not straight down the middle, uh, but he is what is considered center-right. So there are people uh, to the right of Netanyahu, certainly, to a great extent. Namely, you have quite a few religious Jews who do not believe uh, in violence. They are, in fact, pacifists who do not believe in war, uh, and therefore they do not like to serve in the military. Now, in an ordinary country uh, with, you know, civilized laws, uh, that wouldn't be such an issue because, you know, those who don't want to fight in the military just don't sign up. Uh, but in Israel, because of their really constant state of war, uh, they kind of have to have a draft because their population is pretty small and they have to do a lot of fighting and they need a, a, a pretty big uh, army at any given time uh, in order to conduct all of their operations. So they have a rule that uh, when folks turn 18, I believe it is, they have to do two years in the IDF. And so this is universal conscription with, uh, from what I understand, uh, limited to no exceptions. Now this particular party that uh, Bibi needed to uh, attain a majority coalition because uh, apparently he did have, you know, a few other parties on his side, I, I believe. Because if I remember correctly, Netanyahu's party won something like 45 seats, I want to say. So they, they, it definitely needed, uh, he needed to form a coalition with multiple parties uh, in order to a attain a majority. Now this party that he needed, this last party that would have pushed him over the edge of that majority, uh, they were small. They only have five seats in the Knesset. But they are, as I said, a, uh, you know, a party for the interests of uh, the religious right in Israel, and uh, the religious right in Israel does not like to fight. They don't like being conscripted, and uh, who can blame them? Nobody wants to be conscripted. Conscription is just, you know, a euphemism for slavery, and really it's the worst kind of slavery because uh, you are enslaving someone and then making them go fight, in many cases, to the death. I mean, I, as someone who is not a pacifist myself, uh, would be absolutely horrified at the idea uh, that I was going to be told by the government that I have to go fight some guys uh, who I don't know and who I don't really care about and uh, quite likely get maimed or killed or at least emotionally scarred for the rest of my life. But if one were a pacifist who thought that the entire endeavor of war uh, was a completely immoral and wrong and evil, well, then the horror would be, uh, you know, ever more greater. Now, uh, unfortunately for uh, the rest of the Likud party and all the, the folks who just got done uh, with the past election, Netanyahu is not well in compromise on this point. Uh, he would not allow uh, these folks to have that concession. He would not create a cutout uh, for uh, people of a certain uh, Jewish sex uh, to be excluded from the draft. Netanyahu would rather give up uh, his place as prime minister and face another election and uh, potentially lose his position rather than grant a, a small uh, sect the freedom that really all Israelis deserve, the freedom to say no and to not volunteer their life uh, for you know whatever it is that Netanyahu wants them to, to go and die for. Now it would seem that uh, Netanyahu was quite desperate, uh, obviously, now that we know that uh, the government has been, or that parliament has been dissolved, uh, but according to the Labor Party, which is the left 
the center-left party, the party that was traditionally uh, the opposition party to Likud, uh, they claimed that even they were offered a spot in the coalition and that they uh, turned down Netanyahu uh, forthright and said basically that they have no interest in partnering with him on anything. But if, uh, if Netanyahu was willing to offer labor uh, a spot in the coalition, then uh, things, are, things are pretty bad. And I don't see how, uh, after this episode, uh, Netanyahu is going to be able to rally even greater support uh, by September so that he can form a coalition more easily than uh, he would have been able to under these circumstances. I mean, I really don't know what he was thinking in, in turning down those folks. I mean, it seems to me like giving a few uh, relig- uh, exemptions uh, to the draft for a few religious people is a small price to pay for another few years of power, but perhaps Netanyahu is just uh, that principled of a man that he thinks everyone should be enslaved. I guess you could call Netanyahu an egalitarian slave master. But uh, needless to say, I think that this whole episode has uh, probably hurt Netanyahu's credibility and his sort of uh, – his air of uh, uh, invincibility, you know, considering that he's been the prime minister for uh, so much of Israeli history over the last uh, 20 or so years. Perhaps now the uh, Blue and White Party, which I don't know much about, but I know that they're another center-right party. Uh, but they are now the main opposition, uh, then perhaps they'll do a little better, considering that uh, they are not too far uh, away from Likud. It's not like they're, you know, Labor and Likud on opposite sides of the political spectrum. I feel like you could have a lot more uh, uh, movement between Likud and Blue and White as far as support goes. Or perhaps we may just end up in a uh, situation like they had in, uh, what was it, the Netherlands for or, or maybe it was Sweden for quite a few years where they just couldn't form a, a majority government and there had to be a ma- minority caretaker government. Or no, maybe that was Belgium. I think Belgium had it. For- I'm not sure if there is a, a rule permitting minority governments uh, in Israel. I'm not exactly sure how their system works. I mean, I, I know it's a proportional parliamentary system, but beyond that, I, I, I'm not uh, privy as to the intricacies of, of how things work and what happens when the, uh, the regular order breaks down. So anyway, in the meantime, I will keep an eye on this situation. I I do try to keep my eye all over the world. And so uh, if you uh, got anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And uh, please do click the bell uh, because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you uh, miss uh, my next update on this story. So I guess I think that this will indeed be my last video of the day, and I will uh, see you back here tomorrow.